Project Nav. Haven't seen you in a long time. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for being in here. Jets fan, ring care lawn, ring lawn care, sorry. Regulates. JK Wardell, what's going on, Brandon? Good morning, Japonica. Regulators, mount up. <clears throat> Sandy, yes, I am Chiefs in the house, KNS Financial. They are both great people I met at FinCon, doing some great things. Going to a hockey playoff game today. Are you a Rangers fan or a Florida Panthers Jets fan? I'm not sure. Um, good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Good to see you, Kava. Island. Oh, that's right. Islanders. Pat LaFontaine. I remember Pat LaFontaine. I grew up. I grew up a Maple Leafs fan. Uh, Siobhan Scurry. Good morning. Good morning, Kava. Good to see you. Snapchat's been on point. Oh, thank you so much, Regulates. I appreciate that, man. I need to. I need to do that a little bit more. Just do it anyways. Behind the scenes stuff. Just hit the east side of the LBC on a mission trying to find Mr. Warren G. See a car full of girls and no need to tweak. Skirts know what's up with 213. So I hooks the left on 21 and Lewis. Some brothers shooting dice. So I said, let's do this. I jumped out the ride. I said, what's up? Some brothers pulled some gats. So I said, I'm stuck. Morning driving. Oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I can't, I can't get that song in my head. I know the whole song too, man. This is crazy. Uh, Guys, I appreciate you being in here. Cynthia Bazin, the smart chick. Please do me a favor and follow Cynthia. She does a tremendous amounts of great scopes. Um, she's uh she's a motivational speaker, um, keynote speaker, and she's hosting. I want to tell you this much before I go into what I'm doing today. She's hosting a, 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 an amazing conference called Laser Focused. It's laser laserfocusedconference.com. It is going to be October sixth and seventh. Yes, October 6th and 7th in Las Vegas. So I'm going to be speaking there with a, with a whole host of other amazing speakers. So do me a huge favor, follow her, and uh, and check it out. Uh, Cynthia, can you put the, the link in there? You can go in there and follow, you can get tickets. Um, I, I suggest you get them sooner rather than later. Laserfocusconference.com, there it is. You'll learn more about the conference. It's in Vegas. It's a great time of the year, so you can go there and actually, um, the cost of travel is not expensive. The hotel is not expensive. Um, just do me a favor and check it out. Yeah, 6th and 7th of October. I'm so fortunate to be speaking. I'll be talking about business strategy to be some motivational stuff uh, and then some business strategy as well. So um, some pricing strategy, people who are entrepreneurs trying to get you to the next level in your life. So guys, do me a huge favor and share this out. Share the broadcast to your friends and, and followers while you're here. Um, this is going to be a quick scope. Uh, I want to talk to you, give you a small little difference. As you guys know, I'm a CPA, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, that again. Uh, yes, Daquan Love. The world loves Daquan. It's Laser Focus Conference. LaserFocusConference.com. Uh, the frug Frugalennial, I always have problems saying that. Let me tell you who I am. If you're new in the chat box, there it is, uh, there's Cynthia. Do me a favor, put a one in the chat box if you're new to my scopes. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, um, I'm on it. Thank you so much. Daquan Love, thank you so much for being in here. Um, Star Jones, thank you for being in here. I missed the last one. I appreciate that. Um, Siobhan Scurry. Skirt! Thanks for, uh, Curry, I think. Thanks for being here. Miss uh, the Smart Chick, thanks for being here. Beth Hoover, one is also speaking there, so she's phenomenal. Um, uh, Mima V, thanks for being in here. Um, yes, sir. Yasmin Alberto. Uno. Grazie. Thank you for being here. Brian W. Kenny. Thanks for being in the scope. Guys, let me tell you who I am. My name is Abong Eka. I'm a certified public accountant in the Washington, D.C. area. I'm also the author of the best-selling business book, Start Me Up the No... It's Scurry. Okay, Scurry. Got it. Start Me Up the No Business Plan, Business Plan, which is the best-seller internationally published in Canada, the U.S., Indonesia, Barnes & Nobles, Amazon. You can also get it from me, signed copy at startmeupbook.com. I got a special coming up in May, which is Small Business Month, so it's going to be an amazing special. Uh, so stay tuned when, when my school starts sharing that out. It's going to be like a, a book, and you can get a training free if you buy them. Oh, it's crazy. It's going to be great. Um, thank you so much, Lola Ocean. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you being here. I'm also the founder of Economics. We focus on your mission, your mindset, and your money. We do leadership, 
a corporate development training as well as employee empowerment and some motivational stuff as well. But for the most part, it's to empower you to, to live your best life. So if you're an employee or if you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. It's the same blueprint for you to get to that, to ascend to that next level. The whole point is ascension because when you ascend something, you have, there, there's, there's pleasure that comes in your, in your progress. Okay. So when you there, look, this is a scientific principle. You can write this down to two. Dopamine gets released every time you accomplish a task. That's why we feel better when we do things, okay? So that's part of that's part of the structure we do with economics. I own a small business structured at Delaware LLC, but it's Florida Corp. Um, no, it's not weird. It's possible because uh, you can have an LLC, and then you, you can file a form called um, a check the box election to be taxed as a different entity, and that's kind of what usually ends up happening. And if you're based in Florida, it'd be based in Florida. So... It's possible. You can. That's all possible. But let me tell you what I'm talking to you guys today about. Is what are you going to do with your tax refund? I'm gonna give you the difference between the poor and what the rich do. Okay. Mainly because for like the last 13, 14, years, 15 years, I've been, I've been, I've been doing tax and accounting. Um, I've been worked. I worked at some of the largest firms like Deloitte and Touche, Price Waterhouse Coopers, BDO, Resnick, Cohn Resnick. I've uh, been in multinational, international companies as well in their tax uh, function, as well as, as well as being an entrepreneur. I knew the answer, mostly not. <laughs> Thank you, Project Nav. And, and, and I also, as an entrepreneur with my own clients and also doing government work. So, what I've noticed is something simple. I know you'll know people who have, who, who will be getting a tax refund on Monday, or maybe they've already gotten it. Okay, so the, the due date for the return is, is, is Monday. I'm not going into technical aspects of tax. I want to talk to you about the mindset of somebody who gets a tax refund and what they do with it. Because this was this was inspired by all the commercials I see on TV. They're telling you, go take your tax refund and buy a TV. Go take your tax refund and go somewhere else. Exactly, Sandy. Go get a tax refund and then go pay out and go go you know get a get a deal at this restaurant. The people who are poor remain in that place because their mindset is is in the now. And what I mean by that is plain and simple. When you get two thousand, a thousand, five, the average refund is about three thousand dollars. When you get a three thousand dollar refund, are you putting it towards a vacation to go celebrate, or are you using that towards something to enrich yourself? So if I got a refund of thousand dollars, I would rather pay that personally. I'd rather take that thousand dollars and put it back into my business and put it back into myself. What the wealthy do is first thing is they don't really get refunds most of the time, because. No, normally, what, what the what the wealthy do is they will take their refunds, whatever refund is, and they put it back into the into, they put it back to what they owe, so they can pay less later. Or if they take it back, it's getting put back into their business. It's getting put back into their into into their learning. Okay, so a couple of years ago, I had a refund of about fifteen hundred bucks. I minutely the minute I got the money, I bought I bought it I bought a ticket to a conference. Why? Because I believed. That the money that I would get, and I know some of that, some can donate it. Because again, that's your money. It's not the government's money. If you're getting a refund and you're at a certain level, it's not, it's not a refundable credit. Chances are you overpaid, right? More people overpay than they do get refund. Again, well, that's not necessarily true too, but it's, it's close to equal. So a lot of people overpay. When you overpay in, you, you get a refund. You think that you're getting free money from the government, but it's most likely it's your own money. So what I do is I take whatever extra I get, I either put it back into my business I roll it over to next year's taxes, or I already have it set for where I'm going to pay, where I'm going to spend. We try not to overpay, no refunds. Exactly, exactly. A lot of people overpay because, again, if you're an employee, you're just going to over or be overpaying. And so, getting it back is great. Oh, and what's going on, Jay Garcia? Jay Garcia's in the house. Check him out as well, as well as Sandy. Yes, I am cheap. She has phenomenal scope teaching you about credit, uh, as well as uh, Amazon and stuff like. She's phenomenal, great woman. Um, makeup's on fleek when she does her scopes. So she's Sorry, I said the bar real high for you now. She does a lot of great job. So that's better overpay than under not to exactly it is. You're right. So technically speaking, it's better to overpay than not to overpay. Oh, that's a great job, Project Nav. I appreciate it. that's good. That's good. It's better to overpay than to not to overpay. But in the same token, if you do overpay, the goal is simple. What you should do, what you need to do, there they're pushing used cars. Bring W2 to the prayer. Exactly, exactly. See what I'm saying? So, uh, caregiver, that's exactly what a lot of people do. Because again, what people what people are thinking is it's free money. I can go do this, this, and this or that. I want to spend my money. Uh, how many people get audited, Beth Hoover? I don't know. The IRS doesn't tell you that number. The IRS won't tell you that number, but it's it's a decent, it's it's okay percentage. And I, I'm, actually I'll answer that question in two seconds. 
And so the thing I want to tell you the difference between the poor and the rich, the poor people will take the money and buy a TV, buy a vacation, buy something, while the rich people will take that money, whatever money they get, and try and buy a vacation home. They'll use that towards their business. They'll enrich themselves. If I got $1,000, I put that towards a conference because the people I would meet, the, the knowledge I would gain would make me 10 times that amount of money. Every time I invest in something, I want to make 10 times to 20 times to 100 times on my return. If I buy, if I use a certain software, I'm going to make 10 times the return. I've used something like called ClickFunnels. I've made 10 times the return on that already in, in one month, more than that actually. When I, when I use anything, when I have a website, I'm trying to make 10 times the return that I spend. Minimum, minimum 10x return on anything that I invest in. If I buy a book, I'm trying to make 10 times to 100 times return on that particular book, on that particular subject. If I'm whatever I spend money on, whatever I spend time on, it's the same kind of investment. See, the difference is between buying something as a price and getting an investment on it is that the investment denotes the idea that you're going to get a return, right? Because a stock is called an investment because it's, you're going to get a return. But when you buy something, there's no return on it. It's actually a consumable good that you just consume. You buy a TV, you consume it. TV's not returning anything to you unless you use it for work, right? You buy a car. The return you're getting on the car is the fact that you can go to a job, you can go to a client, you can drive somewhere, you can you can run errands, and you can save time. That's the reason why you spend money buying a car. It's not because so you can save time walking everywhere. So that's basically it. Um, and loss of gambling. Yikes. So I appreciate you guys sharing this out. Thank, thank you, love, for being in here. Exactly. So if you do the rich, pat, rich dad, poor dad situation. Hi, Lo. Um, it's, it's basically, you know, assets are things that actually, the assets are things that actually provide for you, right? So I want to go back to Beth Hoover's point. She asked a question about, um, how many people get audited? The IRS doesn't really tell you, but I'll tell you some businesses that do get audited. Uh, heavily cash-based businesses usually get audited. They get triggered. It's kind of like a, it's an automatic. So not an audit. So what ends up happening with, let's go a little bit more in tax. So I also represent people in front of the IRS sometimes. So what ends up happening is this is um, if you have certain businesses, restaurant businesses, food truck businesses, cash, heavily cash-driven businesses can get an inquiry. The IRS doesn't show up at your house and steal your stuff. That's what they tell you on the radio so you can get scared. What ends up happening is they send you letters. The reason why the IRS comes to you is because you don't answer the letters. If you answer the letters, they talk to you, right? And you get some representation, and they, they talk to you. They're human beings. But they use usually a lot of times they don't use people. They use machines to, that, that they'll flag certain things. So if your expenses don't sound right for, for the industry you're in, or your expenses are too high, or they fluctuate too much, there may be an inquiry. They'll ask you for support. I've been audited before, too. It wasn't even an audit. It took, they sent me a letter saying, show me the receipts for these expenses. I printed out my Amex card, right? Put it in a nice little package with a nice little letter. Within two days, sent it back. About six weeks later, they wrote a letter back saying, sorry, but we didn't mean to bother you. Something like that. Not that. And it wasn't that nice. But it was like, you know, nothing's going to mean change. That's exactly how it has to happen. So if you're a heavily cash business, if, if, you're, if your expenses fluctuate, if they're too high for the, what you do, uh, things like that, inconsistencies in your return, right? Those are the kinds of things. If you're taking certain credits and refundable credits and, and tax credits that, you may, that you're on the fence that you may not be qualified for, um, things like that is what they ask for. Things that, seem, that sound exorbitant, right? Then they'll, they'll inquire. So they, all they care about is this. IRS cares about two things mainly. That you that you that you are reporting the amount the, the right amount of revenue that you have right because a lot of people underreport revenue or overreport expenses. Think about it; it's simple. Everything else is it doesn't mean anything. You either re record too much expenses or you record too few uh, too few revenue, too few income. Those are the two things they care about. I got a letter last year because I was missing paperwork. Exactly, exactly. That's what happens. So it's a machine. The IRS's uh, budget has been cut. Their funding has been cut. Because of all the political nonsense, so as a result, it's hard for them to do do things like that. I no longer use bank accounts or personal business or find fintech accounts legally. Hey, that's that's a different level, Project Nav. I'm not trying to. I'm not ready to do all that. Um, uh, but yes, I. Hey, if you if you know what you're doing, that's that's great. But that's basically it, man. I wanted to remind you guys today, people you know, right? If you get any amount of money, your goal should be reinvesting it into what you want, reinvesting it into what you see is possible. So let me let's use a farming analogy. If you got money 
and you're a farmer, what are you going to buy? You're going to go buy seeds. You're going to go buy manure. You're going to go buy sod. You're going to go buy the things you need so you can plant your crop in the spring. So when the fall time comes, you'll have wheat not only to eat, but you can sell and take care of your expenses and take care of your family. But too many people, they get the money and they go buy food right away. They go buy the fish rather than learning how to fish, rather than learning how to, how to plant and how to sow, right? And so when the fall comes, they're begging. When the fall comes, they're asking for favors. They're asking for things because they didn't they didn't, they didn't pour into themselves earlier on. They didn't take the time to figure out exactly what they needed to do so that when, 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 when fall came, that they could actually reap a bountiful harvest. There are so many people who do that, and you can avoid that. If you get money back, oh, thank you so much. If you get money back, ask yourself a simple question. How? How can I invest, and what should I invest into in order to make sure that in the next six months, I can make more money than what I, what I just got back? People you try to use paying taxes as a problem. They're like, you know what? If you're paying taxes, it means you're making money. There are a lot of people who don't make any money and they're not paying any taxes. Plain and simple. So I want to challenge you to simple situation. If you're getting money back, what book can I buy? What course can I buy? What conference can I go to? What 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 mastermind group can I be a part of? What what learning experience? What 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 course at a university? Whatever, what can I do? Who can I help in order to learn the things I need to learn to make more money? right? Do I want to be the farmer that buys seed, right? And that learns from another older farmer how to farm so that I can have the best harvest by by fall? Or am I going to be the person that negates all that, takes the money, goes goes and buys a loaf of bread that's only going to last three days? I cannot cannot pay my taxes. I don't have the money to. Hey, Project Nab, you know what you should do? You should pay what you can. Pay what you can. So a lot of times people think this, uh, oh, that's awesome, uh, Sandy. I love that. A lot of times people do this. They will say, say they owe $1,000, right? They'll say, I can't pay $1,000, so I won't pay anything, even though they may have $600 that they can afford to pay. So what happens is this. There are multiple types of penalties you can get. You can get failure to file, right? If you don't file your return on time by Monday, excuse me, by Monday, you can also get failure to pay timely, right? That's if you don't pay on time by, by Monday. Um, and then there's also other, there are other rules too, but pay what you can. If it's a dollar, ten dollars, pay that. It means something because even if you have a discussion with the IRS, you say, "Look, this is what I, that's all I had at the time. This is what I had to pay." Um, but in the same token, the interest and penalties is based on the remaining balance. So don't don't sit around saying, "I don't have a thousand dollars. I'm gonna wait till I get a thousand dollars." If you wait till you get a thousand dollars, you'll never get a thousand dollars. I can't afford to eat, and I'm facing homelessness in two weeks. Life goes on. I'll be all right. Hey, man, I'm praying for you, Project Nab. I'm praying for you, my friend. If you if you if you if you're at that point, paying the IRS is the least of your worries. If you're at that point. So I'm thinking about you. I'm praying. I'm praying for you, and uh, it, uh, you know it's going to work out. You got skills for you to do what you've been able to do thus far. You have skills. Um, exactly, exactly, Cynthia. You're showing effort to pay something, even if it's a dollar. Send a dollar in the mail. But um, but I'll say if you're at a point where you're going to be homeless in a couple of weeks, then then that's the least of your worries. You're, where your main place is trying to get a place to stay and get money coming in. Um, what would we get? In, what do you mean in t- regards to budget? What do you mean in regards to budget? I gotta get out of here. Um, Budget for your for your business, your life, for the IRS. All right, I'll see you later, Beth Hoover. I'm about to wrap up too, so you got you got most of it. Good to see you, Beth. Uh, check out Beth. Beth is speaking uh, in October as well. So budgeting your money. I would say this: you generally know what your uh, regulates. You generally know what your expenses are. I'm not a huge fan. Right? Hey, Eric's late. Um, hey, you know what? I understand. I've been there, Project Nav. I lost thousands of dollars, man. I, I man, I, my story's similar to yours. I wasn't. I was at a place where I, my my startup went down, and after that, my startup went down. Um, I ended up getting laid off from a job that I was in. I was I was doing both at the same time. Project Nav. I've been there. I've been there. So I get it. I totally get it. Um, uh, I was gonna say. So so with that being said, um, budgeting your time. Uh, so budgeting your money. I would suggest this. You know what your general expenses are, right? And so you should just keep track of that and, and try and automate as much as possible. Um, my dude left me six figures behind. Damn. Damn, that's crazy. You can, yeah, you can do this, Project Nav. You can do this. You started maybe struggling, but it's something else you can do. You got skills. To do what you were able to do before, you have skills. You can figure it out. You can sell something. Um, so with that being said, uh, budgeting your money, you know what your basic expenses are, right? The goal is automating those as much as possible. But not certain ones, not not the cable bill because they'll just charge you whatever. I mean, I try I try to do certain things. Panama Papers, that's funny, um, that's funny, Katie. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I don't have I don't have any money in Panama right now. But yeah, you know what your expenses are. So it's just basically knowing what you're gonna what you're gonna. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. The car accident messed me up. I understand that too. I, I had a car accident. Too. I had a bad car accident too. Um, regulates. The thing is this. I'm not a huge fan. I'm always trying to think of ways to make more money. That's that. I try to think of abundance. How can I make more money? What can I do to make more money? All the time, I'm always thinking that. And so I try to avoid thinking of cutting. A lot of people cut, and that's that's the, that's a different mentality. I totally get it. Um, I know time to spend for, for savings. I understand the Richie Bay taxes petition for an investigation. Um, yeah, you can. Hey, Katie, you can waste your time doing that. It's not going to work unless you're rich. Doesn't matter. Just work. Focus on your life and your journey. Like it doesn't matter. Like it, it really doesn't. Nothing you say. And I don't mean that to disrespect you. I'm just saying in life, I can focus on that or I can focus on how I can make money. So when I get rich, how about this? How about I get rich and I can get into that circle that I can have that conversation? That's my goal. Um, me screaming about some rich guy in the Pan Panama Papers means absolutely nothing. No one will listen to you, right? No one listens to anybody now, right? How many people are trying to, so it doesn't matter. So focus on how you can make money and get yourself to a good place. Um, uh, I'm focusing your lane. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Um... Yeah, that's life. That's life. Like it's see the world the way it is, not the way you wish you could, the way the way you the way it ought to be sometimes. And that's that's a that's a that's a Machiavelli uh quote, right? The people who 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 risk peril are the ones who look at things the way the world ought to be and they act that way rather than acting in the way the world currently is. So you you see that in politics, people running around screaming about Bernie Sanders all that it doesn't matter, right? They're talking about the kind of getting rid of the banks. But I'm not. This is not a, a for a pro or a con against Bernie Sanders. But you cannot. You get rid of the banks. All your all your mortgages go. All your car loans go. All your all your businesses. Everything goes. It runs the industry. It runs the financial structure. It is literally the foundation of everything that sits on. So exactly, Project Now you got to do you. Don't worry about all the other stuff. Right? You do you. Everything else takes care of itself. And um, and then you see injustice. You know, like like you know, physical everything. That's a different story. But I'm I'm talking about like. People evade tax. You can't do nothing. You can't do nothing about that. Um, so focus on focus on your on your on your goal. Nike kilo de. Um, you're responsible 100 percent for your success. I probably don't owe money. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, guys. I gotta get out of here. I got I got a client meeting in about 30 minutes. And I gotta take care of. So a phone call. You guys have been great. Be great. All right. Nothing else pays, as Grant says. But also. You have the ability to, to do everything you want to do. The money you get back, ask yourself a simple question. How can I invest that in what I want? Beth Hoover is still here. Good to see you guys. Take care.